on occasion, it is necessary for the channel to put out a video designed to elicit an emotional response from the trolls that kind of hide in the background. YouTube uses the political makeup of your subscribers to decide whether or not to promote or keep your channel monetized. Meaning they look at the traffic. Even though you might think you've created this uh, anonymous Google account with some fake name, they see where that comes from, what videos it watches, and they create a picture. And a lot of the channels that you have seen disappear lately have been completely overrun with these types. So you have to find a way to bring them out of the shadows so that you can block and delete them. And that's what last night's video was about. I still disagree fundamentally with this woman, the current first lady, making her personal problem with a member of our administration public. If she wants to go talk to her husband about it, of course. But using her platform to say that this person should not be serving in the White House is entirely inappropriate. When her husband hasn't already taken the lead, not because he's her husband, because he's the elected official, and she's not. Now, I think a lot of women in my audience are going to relate to what I'm about to reveal. I think this woman is under a great deal of stress right now, and she's about ready to snap, because her husband has used this, um, for lack of a better term, two tits a hole in a heartbeat method for choosing assistants and choosing people to put in positions of power in our government in the last two years. This particular person right here, there was no position at the White House for her, so the current leadership created one. This is a friend of Ivanka's that helped her design clothes. This is a bikini model. And her position was White House Director of Strategic Communications, a role created for her. She had to leave the White House when she testified before a congressional committee that she had lied on the president's behalf. And after having done that, She's going to now begin in 2019 working at Fox as Chief Communications Officer. Hope Hicks. Now, two other people on the chopping block. And, and just to be clear, this is the woman that uh, Melania had the problem with right here. Um, apparently, this woman had leaked some negative stories about Melania herself personally. This has nothing to do with a woman's performance in the service of the United States. That's why Melania wants this woman fired. Not because of her job performance, but because of some story that this woman doesn't like Melania or said something negative about Melania. It's petty. I get it, but it's petty. Because I'm sure that Melania is getting tired of this nonsense. Over and over and over again, we have seen the president use a completely different set of standards, no pun intended there, to choose who is going to be UN ambassador, who is going to work in the White House, who is going to work closely with the president. Now, I brought up this picture because I think as if there's people out there that are parents, they would understand that when you have a difference of opinion with your spouse or you have something you're concerned about with your spouse, you bring it up to them in private. We used to do this. I know a lot of you 
know that uh, my better half and I, we serve together. She technically outranks me by one stripe. And we have two daughters. So in at different points in our careers, we were in charge of soldiers for whatever reason. If there was a difference, if there was somebody under my command or somebody under her command that the other one didn't like or thought wasn't trustworthy or thought there was a problem, that person didn't go out publicly and state that. They, we did it privately. We consulted with each other privately, both about issues in the military and issues of parenting. Sometimes just a good long drive to air everything out can do wonders. And the current First Lady needs to understand that her personal problems with people in the administration, by all means, and let me be very clear here, by all means, she has the right to go to her husband and express those concerns all day long. But the president hadn't come out and made any statement regarding this woman, this uh, assistant of Mr. Bolton's. And look, even if he had, if he had came out and said, you know, we're thinking about getting rid of this woman or this woman is retiring or there's a problem here. And then somebody came to Melania and asked her to comment on that. Okay, yeah, because he'd already put it out, the elected official had already put it into the public sphere and somebody had approached her. But that's not what happened here. He hadn't said a word about it. His administration hadn't said a word about it. There were rumblings about it. And then she uses her office, her privilege, to go out and take the lead on this is completely inappropriate from any standard. You look at whether it's a private standard or a public standard or whatever, whatever she did was inappropriate. And you'll, I know a lot of you out there is like, well, you know, they're married and you'll have to pardon me if I'm not um, all that fired up about honoring the sanctity of this guy's third marriage to his second mistress. Third marriage to his second mistress. We're going to actually cover that in the next video about how Mattis is putting people very, very close to him in charge of Southern Command, meaning next year that we might be seeing something. But this is another woman that is on the chopping block. This is Kirsten Nielsen. And she's a spooky character, but... There is something about her past that a lot of people probably don't realize, and I brought that up. Here, she did work under the Bush administration, but then something strange happened. Early career. Nielsen served during George W. Bush administration as special assistant to the president and as senior director for prevention, preparedness, and response, PPR, at the White House Homeland Security Council. She also set up and led, as Assistant Administrator, the Transportation Security Administration Office of Legislative Policy and Government Affairs. That's, wow, a lot. Before serving in the Trump administration, she was a senior member of the Resilience Task Force of the Center for Cyber and Homeland Security Committee at George Washington University. All these titles, right? But after leaving the Bush administration in 2008, check this out, Nielsen became the founder and president of... Sinesis Consulting. The firm's online profile listed her as its only employee with the firm's phone number being Nielsen's personal cell phone. In September 2013, now remember, September 2013, the company won a federal contract with an initial award of about 450000 to provide policy and legislation, technical writing, and organizational development to FEMA. This is the second paragraph under early career of this woman's wiki. So somehow, all by her lonesome, all by herself, 
this woman on the left, after leaving the Bush administration in 2013, with only a cell phone and her resume, got this huge half million dollar contract to do spook work for FEMA. Now, you can allege either that makes her trustworthy or doesn't make her trustworthy, either way. But there is one final article that I want to share with you. And I think it will show you something that, at least I hope it'll show you something, that'll maybe allow you to take pause and realize how you're being manipulated in this whole thing. This article is from September 8th, 2017. This was right after Ms. Nielsen took power. Took her position in Homeland Security. All right. Here's how the article leads out. Chief of Staff John Kelly's no-nonsense deputy, Kirsten Nielsen, has been working in the White House for only five weeks, but in her short tenure, the new sheriff's number two has already helped set a new tone in the West Wing, That was described by more than 10 senior administration officials and outside advisors to the president as one that can be dismissive and lacking of collegiality. All right, so she's not a little misfriendly. Not a problem. But you need to look at that statement about new sheriff. This picture is from 1985. Do you notice the guy in the far right? And the blonde in the middle? This uh, picture should tell you everything you need to know about this idea of outsider, sheriff, new sheriff. This guy's four feet from President Reagan. And his current wife, his current wife was in eighth grade when this picture was taken. Now that should be something that makes you think. If it doesn't, I can't help. Because clearly, we have a problem. We have a huge problem. And it's not about Republican, it's not about Democrat. It's about the compromised state of the man in the White House. This isn't about Republican, it's not about Democrat, it doesn't matter what happened, Obama and Hillary and all that, it doesn't matter. We have someone, right now, finger on the trigger, who is incredibly, incredibly compromised. And I am uh, very sure that there are people out there willing to uh, take advantage of that. This article right here, it's in Russian. Talking about Miss Nauert. They know. They absolutely know what's going on. And they know how they're going to play him. And that should terrify everyone. So we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.